DeepSeek has just released a new model in their Janus series, the Janus Pro, which is a unified multimodal understanding and generational model. I'm going to check it out first on a hosted platform, then set it up locally to see if my video card can handle it. This new model comes with some impressive capabilities. It can chat, generate images from text, and analyze images with improved stability and scalability. Looking at the available models, the first two are older versions, but the 1B and 7B are the new ones I'll be testing today. When it comes to file sizes, the 1B model comes in at around 4 gigabytes, while the 7B model takes up about 15 gigabytes. These sizes aren't actually that big for AI models, just to put it in perspective. Compared to the DeepSeek R1 model, which is more than 600 gigabytes, these are peanuts. Under the file section, there are installation instructions that I'll come back to in a moment. First, let's see how it performs on Hugging Face, which you can access for free on their platform by currently accessing it directly from the trending panel, or if you don't see it there, just search for Janus and Spaces. This is the web UI that I'll set up locally later too. At the top, you can chat with the model and add pictures to talk about them, and below that, you can generate images. You just type a prompt and generate. I'm going to select one of their sample prompts from below and let it run. The 7B model took about 30 seconds to finish, and the results are, well, how should I say it? There's room for improvement compared to established image generation models. But since this is a multimodal understanding and generational model, perhaps that's the trade-off. If that's the case, then regardless, this is a huge win for open source. Let me try another one of their examples. The face of a beautiful girl. Yep, that's a girl. What else can I say? All right, let me move on to the upper section. I want to see what will happen if I give it an equation. I'm not quite sure what the error is about. Either I'm forcing it to do something it's not meant to do, or it's on their side. Either way, I'll try this again later when I run it locally. Let me see how it explains this abstract philosophical image I pre-made for it. Interesting. It extracted elements from the image and gave an interpretation for them, summarizing it as, overall, this image is a thought-provoking piece that invites viewers to contemplate the nature of time, existence, and the human experience. That's deep, man. So if you want to test it out online, come here and engage with it at the top, and below, try out generating images. All right, this is the fun part for me. Let me see if my video card can handle the 7B model. I have 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Will that be enough? Let's find out. Here's how I will run it, through Anaconda. It's a Python distribution that simplifies package management and environment setup, especially for AI, machine learning, and data science projects. That means each environment has its own isolated dependencies, preventing conflicts between different projects, and it can be discarded without affecting the main system, making experimentation safer and easier. Just install it, and then create environments here by clicking Create. Name it to distinguish it, add Python 3.10, confirm it. Once the environment is created, you see all these dependencies and packages are automatically added to the environment. To add new packages, change the dropdown from installed to not installed and any other package. For example, I will add git so I can pull the DeepSeek repository and set up the environment. Look it up, select it, apply it, and apply again, and there it is. Now, the environment is ready to be launched. Press the play button, then choose open terminal. All right, I'm in. Let me change the location where I want to save the repository. It will be downloaded in the folder you opened before pulling it. Actually, before that, I need to download PyTorch. Go to pytorch.org and press get started, then under start locally. Since the conda packages are no longer available, let's pick pip to install PyTorch manually. Select the CUDA version, either 11.8 or 12.4. Basically, CUDA 12.4 is for newer GPUs and 12.6 can have compatibility issues. Here, copy the command and paste it back in the terminal. This will install PyTorch for the setup environment in Conda. Once that's done, let me get the repository. Go to DeepSeek AI's GitHub, copy the repository URL, and use it to clone the repository. Back in the terminal, type git clone and paste the link. All right, the repository is downloaded. Let me switch the folder to the downloaded repository, which is Janus. That means run CD Janus. Now I need all the dependencies for the repository. Head back to DeepSeek's Janus GitHub, scroll down to installation. Here it says to run pip install dash E, but I want to run it in a web user interface, so scroll further down. Here, copy the install command line, which says Gradio in the end, paste it back in terminal. This will ensure that you can run it in a web-based user interface using Gradio, which is a tool to run AI models in a web interface. All right, the environment is ready. Now what's left is to tweak a setting and run it. First, head to the folder where Janus is downloaded, open the demo folder, and open the app januspro.pi file with a text editor or whatever you prefer. And here where it says model path, change the path's ending to say 1B instead of 7B if you want to download the 1B model instead of 7B. I will test them both. So lastly, grab the last command that runs the model, type python demo slash app underscore januspro.py and run it. And there it goes. Copy this local URL or hold control and click it to open it in your browser. There it is, the same UI as on Hugging Face. I've enabled live GPU usage tracking to see how demanding each model is. Let me just make the window stick to the top with my handy Power Toys tool. By the way, I have a video on Power Toys tools every Windows user should use, always on top being one of them. Check the description below, I will link it there. All right, let me go straight to the bottom to test the example prompt and see how it will perform. It looks like the 1B model is using half of the VRM, which is quite a lot. I have to point out that my OBS is using a gig or two alongside the model, so it's not just the model consuming. So after 20 seconds, the image is done generating. The results seem kind of cartoonish. I'll save it for later reference. Now let me see the next prompt. The next image took 21 seconds to generate. The results seem a bit off, so there's 
there's room for improvement. Now let me check out the chat. I will give it the same equation I gave it on Hugging Face. I see it's a model that engages with images only. So then let me upload a picture, this one with the chair. A bit bright, but that's okay. Let me see if it can describe it. The description seems fine. What more can you say about a chair, right? Let me see if I can use it for practical tasks like writing 13 tags for Etsy about this chair. I mean, the results are repeating and the tags are too long, but hey, it's a step in the right direction, right? And the average use of VRAM is around what? Without OBS recording, maybe around five to six gigabytes. Now for the next 7B model, close everything down, web UI, the terminal, restart the terminal, navigate to where the Janus folder is located, and now go back to the file where I changed the model from 1B to 7B and change it back, then save it. Run the Janus Pro Python file again, and it's downloading, and it will download it for a while since the 7B model is 14 gigabytes big. Then run the local address again. Now this is interesting. This model is consuming more than 16 gigabytes, and it is tapping into shared GPU memory. Let me see if this model will finish at all, or will it go out of memory? I'm like four minutes in, and it is using up all the VRAM and shared memory. This is getting tight. After around five minutes, it finally finished. Well, there you go. 16 gigabytes of VRAM is not enough for this model. And the results are, well, let me put 1B and 7B side by side. Well, there's room for improvement. But as I said before, for open source, this is a step in the right direction. Let me upload an image and see how it analyzes it. I'll give it the chair item again and ask it to describe it. All right, around 30 seconds in, it finished. And it's not much different from the 1B model. There's not that much you can get from a chair image. And the last question about the 13 tags took as well around 30 seconds, but this time the results are better. Not practically usable because of the tag lengths, but it can give ideas for choosing the right tags. And there you have it. If you run a video card with more than 16 gigabytes, you can go and have fun with the 7B model. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.